What's up, guys? Casey Santana here with Rich Soil Podcast. We have Melanie on deck today. If some of you guys don't know, she um, was with FNM Fat Nugs Magazine. She's got some new stories to share now. Just another great woman in the space I wanted to share with you guys. So welcome, Miss Melanie. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Happy to be here tonight. Cheers to that. On that note, it's Monday, and I thank you for your time because I know we're all fucking busy nowadays. Um, what's up? How's it going? Uh, are you in the SoCal area? So I'm actually in Florida. I'm just south of Tampa and St. Petersburg. That took me by surprise. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Okay. Everybody always assumes I'm in the LA area. Yeah, I know. Okay. Well, so the, the Florida. Okay. So you're, well, we're hot as hell out here right now. We're like humid almost today, but I know a lot of people have been just overall, like really hot out here. So that's why I was curious to know, but Florida's probably equally as hot and probably oh, yeah. humid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> always been, always been out there. Uh, no, I actually grew up in New Jersey on the Jersey shore. <laughs> oh okay taking me back to the old days as I'm wearing my MTV shirt yeah <laughs> perfect <laughs> right yeah yes oh shit okay okay so you're east coast totally east coast vibe um I know usually when I get people on here I like to ask them about morning routines um anything specific about your morning routines as a woman uh is there any fitness involved in any of it I know coffee and weeds kind of primary for most of the people yeah. moving on here so let's pretend that already happened uh what does your yeah. morning look like usually um you know lately I've actually been practicing French so I started doing Duolingo yeah <laughs> And I took it like in college and when I was younger and uh, my husband and I were in France for a few weeks in the spring and I started using it and I was like, wow, you know, like I actually remember a lot more than I thought. So I downloaded the app and I've been practicing that in the morning. I also do yoga. That's been now like a nighttime routine. It kind of shifted, but it used to always be in the morning. Yoga is something is like a hate and love relationship for me. Um, I may have probably OCD. I've never been diagnosed or ADD or some sort, but I can't sit still. So that part is like really the learning part of it for me. Although I know the health benefits that comes from yoga and understanding like the breath work and all of that. So um, getting there, but also love fitness, um, anything that gets the body moving and the mind all in one flow is probably you know, really healthy for most people. And that's the thing with my podcast is just trying to highlight how healthy um, the people are in our industry. It's like, it's crazy to think that we're sitting there getting faded, couch locked, just yeah. lazy, like what they have portrayed and, and, and painted and illustrated for so many people to see. It's just not us. And so I always ask that question. Um, I come from a little bit of bodybuilding and mixed martial arts. And so it's something I always want to make sure that we highlight um, that our people are out there and we're active and we're creative. We do all types of shit. Um, yeah. Anything specifically when it comes to somebody who's molded you into who you are today? I usually ask them, most of my guests about mentors in their life anybody that has taken to where you are now um so there's been a lot of people honestly that have helped me get to where I am today I think like behind every person is a village you know so I mean in the industry specifically when I first started Bree Smith uh really helped me out she kind of walked me through like what to expect like the good and the bad and introduced me to a bunch of people. She actually helped me get my first job in the industry officially, which was at Civilized Worldwide when they were relaunching. Um, so she definitely helped me out a lot. Uh, I have nothing but good things to say about Brie. And, you know, there's been a lot of people. Like, it's hard to say, to say just one, for example. I don't have, like, a formal mentor right now. Um, I would love to have one. It just, like, has never really come up for me yeah, yeah um, I get it. so but I really feel like it's such a such a good thing to have just somebody to kind of like coach you through life because we're all just out here like trying to make it work you know 
yeah, not an easy industry. <laughs> I think a lot of people think, um, cause it's cannabis, it's just, you know, all fun and it's all rainbows and it's perfect. But I think most of us know, uh, that it's not a very easy industry, but our love and passion for the plant and educating and bringing value to others is what helps us just keep checking and just keep believing in what we do. Um, so it sounds like weed has been part of your life for a really long time. I mean, I know most people call it cannabis. You can call it whatever you want, but I think realistically, if you're old school, it's, it's always been weed. It sounds so weird to like cannabis. Um, I feel like, you know, it's that transition when I went from the banking world and then I was off of work, that lingo just turned off and on. Um, but yeah, how long has weed been part of your life? Um, so I was actually thinking about this this week. So the first time I ever smoked weed, I must have been like 14. So I was at my friend, quick story, I was at my friend's house. She had an older brother who was like a couple of years older than us. So I feel like this story is like common for most people. And he like smoked us up on his bowl. I remember coughing. That was it. And then later in high school, um, I was really close with my neighbor and we were stoners. And we would like hang out in the backyard and, you know, go on blunt cruises, which is like, you know, (laughs) I think something that like all teenagers that smoke weed do, like, let's be real. Um, And it just has always been there. I mean, I remember early on thinking like, wow, after I smoke, like, I feel like I can laugh with my friends more. I can like, I didn't know it then, but I could be more present. So it's, been with me since then. Yep. I think it's about the same, um, middle school. So I would say that's probably about the same about freshman year. Um, I still remember it till this day. I didn't like it at first, but yeah, it wasn't until I got into like the older years that I reflected and realized how much it helped me just be a positive person. And just, I was always the like, fuck it. If that didn't work out, keep moving. And I don't know if that was from weed and it just made you that stronger type of woman, but, um, what got you to where you are now? I know I got to meet you personally from working with Lindsay and Dustin with fat nugs magazine. Uh, tell us about that journey and what that looked like for you. Sure. So I definitely did not have like a linear resume for lack of a better term. And I know like you come from the banking world and like so many people from, from, the cannabis industry have come from other industries, you know, like we're, we're a fairly young industry. So I started, I was actually a adjunct professor. I taught cultural anthropology at a college in New Jersey. Yeah. And, um, I really loved that. And I was like debating going for my PhD. I never really could commit to that, but, um, a lot of people don't realize that cultural anthropology, you learn about plant medicine. So you learn about psychedelics, you learn about different plants that are sacred and ceremony or medicinal, all these different things. And when I was in grad school, I took a lot of courses with an ethnobotanist and it really kind of like piqued my interest in plant medicine beyond just the fact that like, I liked smoking weed and, you know, tripping on mushrooms. Like it was so much more than that, you know, Um, it tied into all these things that I was interested in. So long story short, that kind of pushed me into writing. Um, I did a bunch of other things in between. Like I worked in um, food and bev and wine and liquor, which kind of gave me an interesting um, background to step into cannabis, another controlled substance. So all of these things kind of came together. And then I lost my job early on in the pandemic, had to make money somehow, So I was writing um, and started making connections in the industry and it kind of just started snowballing in the best way possible though, just like networking. And honestly, like LinkedIn is where it's at for networking. Right. And that kind of came up during the pandemic. So yeah, like it was this, this, this organic thing that happened where I got connected with a bunch of different people and we kind of just all aligned and freelancing really let me meet a ton of people and work on all different types of projects. Um, and I eventually, you know, connected with Dustin, hit it off with him. We had stayed in touch for a while and he presented me with the opportunity to be the editor at the magazine. So 
I, you know, took that and then this, that's been a great experience. I've really got to meet so many awesome people through all the different projects we've done and learn so much about the industry. Like, it's great to talk to people that have been doing this for like their entire lives. Like they've been in the industry before there was an industry, you know, and like learning all the things about them. So yeah, it's, it's been a really, really great experience. And, you know, I, today was actually my last day. I'm stepping away now and it's bittersweet. Um, but I, I'm excited to continue to see like what the magazine does. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I love you guys. You guys have been a huge supporter of just not just my platforms and everything I've done, but I think you guys harness supporting women and you guys do a great job about uh, bringing that to light and the diversity that you guys do it. Um, but your, your creativeness and the way you guys all work together. I think I had mentioned this to Dustin. I had him on an, a previous episode is you guys can all tell that you guys all organically move and flow the same as far as where the mission was going with FNM. And it, it just shows, it illustrates in everything that you guys write, everything that you guys post as far as social media. And that's hard to find, you know, a, a group of people that are working so fluid with one another. And it's not like you guys are all making bank on this. So to see that on top of it is is really dope. I love um, what you guys put out. And I think to my understanding from what I've seen, you were really a huge part of this cover that is so eye catchy. I, I mean, you can tell, you want to talk a little bit about what got you to creating something sure. like this? Sure. So, um, as you know, like fat nugs uses AI art, a lot of AI art. And I also did the image on the back cover as well. That's also mine. Um, so the whole cover, I'm really proud of the cover. Um, so I started using mid journey and I was always, I paint and I draw. Um, but AI art kind of like intrigued me. It was a way to translate what you see in your mind onto the screen, right? And kind of like almost instantaneously. But I created that cover uh, after making portraits. So I was working on a bunch of portraits that were women smoking. Um, That's what I was focusing on in Mid Journey. And I was using all these different um, keywords, right? Like, I use Quentin Tarantino a lot mm-hmm. <laughs> and that comes up with like these cool, like lighting yeah. situations and like this kind of like funky aesthetic. Um, and she was one of them and I uploaded a bunch of them and Dustin was looking at it, and he's like, you know, I, I can't stop looking at this image. Like, I think this is going to be the cover. And I was like, Oh, sweet. Yeah. And it was a kind of a, a great moment for me because somebody that always created art, but like I never put it out there, you know, it was always like for me and artists and writers, we're all our own worst critics. So even though I didn't physically paint or draw this one, like it came out of my brain. Yep. So I'm really proud of that. Yeah, no, it's sick. I think it's badass. I think you guys did some merch on it too. The towel yeah. that you guys have, I think it's super cool. Um, it's amazing what you guys are doing with that feature and that tool and how you guys are using it. Um, but I think people also don't give you guys enough credit on how you're using it. It's not like it just creates itself and there's the image. So I think some people are misunderstanding how AI is used. So I think, uh, more people like you to explain how you best use it for your things like this. Where are you going now, now that you're not at FNM? So I took a full-time job. I took a marketing role um, at an organic supplements company. So I actually stepped out of cannabis for my full-time job. And that was like, to be totally real with you, I needed to be able to pay my rent consistently. And I, through my years in the industry, like it's it's tumultuous. I've been through two leadership coups. Like I can call them nothing other than like coup d'etats in a company. And it's very, it's volatile. It just, it is what it is. And I needed something at this point in my life that was going to be really stable. And that stability would allow me to continue working on other projects. So I'm also co-editing a research book that's being published by Wiley on cannabis uh, and hemp testing and analysis. And I'm also a contributor 
on a yet to be launched digital psychedelics publication. That's 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 all I can say because I'm under NDA. But um, <laughs> um, yeah. So as much as I love being part of the magazine, I didn't think that taking a full time role would allow me to give as much as myself as I think is necessary to really do the work. And I think it's important work and it deserves someone who can dedicate more time than I have to give. And that was really why I stepped away. But for what I'm doing in the future, like I'm still, I'm rooted in cannabis. I'm rooted in plant medicine. I'll always be here. And, um, you know, I'm still essentially, you know, working in plant medicine and in wellness. Like I really, cannabis is wellness. Cannabis is health, you know? So I love that. This is, this is what's going on now, you know, it's just kind of like growing pains in a way. Yeah, no, I think it's real talk. Uh, some people yeah. can hate on it all they want, but it's, it's facts and yeah. um, you're still very much in a wellness industry. And I think for me with um, when you said organic supplements, that's huge. And then you're also coming with a background from our community. That means you're another voice in another industry mm-hmm. And that, that can go a long way. And so, um, I'm interested to see where that goes and learn all about it. I'm here to support you. Uh, psychedelics, that's the new thing right now. I think a lot of people who are kind of been with the cannabis and have always kind of dibble dabbled with a couple shrooms here and there. I know I have just, I've always been a recreational person. I mean, I've been in SoCal all my life. So I've smoked weed yeah. at a younger age, but it wasn't until you get like I till baby two that I'm like, okay, mushrooms, like PT, um, postpartum depression, uh, Mm -hmm. not, you know, I'm kind of, I'm a big believer in your mindset. And so for me, it was kind of like, I'm off and on, on how that can affect women. But after baby two, I was very aware of my body and I can tell that those certain like emotions were coming out of nowhere. And, you know, my temper would just Blair, I don't know. It was just like so fucking weird. And I'm like, oh, this is the roller coaster that a lot of these women have shared their stories on. And mushroom microdosing, the teas that just kind of like readjusted some things, Um, learning that you have to like give yourself like a week off and a week on and like so that your body, um, how much do you know about psychedelics? Like how are you like full, fully diving? Because some people are like, oh, I'm growing it now. (laughs) It's like full on like in their living room and it's hard to find, you know, I'll see like a couple of friends posting like their trips, you know, they go out and festival and they have like little gummies, little marshmallows. And I'm like, where do you guys get those? They're not at stores right now, but I think everyone's just got their hands in it. And um, I'm just curious to see where it goes. Yeah, I'm curious to see where it goes as well. Um, Like psychedelics is kind of like a force to be reckoned with right now because there's so much like, uh, you know, research backing up the health benefits of it. I think like cannabis really like paved the way for them to come in. Um, but in like a, in the recreational way, I dabbled in psychedelics like for years recreationally. I went to college in New Orleans. I've been through like eight Mardi Gras. Like it's just like par for the course, you know? So it's <laughs> get, coming into it like in a professional way um, is really interesting because again, it kind of bridges my interests, like my background. Um, and for me personally, like, I don't grow mushrooms or anything like that. Um, and our the community that we have here in St. Pete in Florida actually is a huge psychedelics community. Oh. A lot of people are surprised by this, but there is like a very, very well-established um, plant medicine culture here. And it's everything from like combo ceremonies, ayahuasca ceremonies. Like we have a good friend who helps facilitate Like there's a lot of plant medicine culture here. So it's kind of allowed me to step inside of it from a completely different perspective where I'm not only like a recreational user, but I've also participated in like ceremonial aspects of the medicine and have spoken with people that like regularly participate. Um, And, you know, like ayahuasca 
people are going on a diet a month before, like they're prepping for their ceremony for weeks in advance, like mentally, physically. So there's so much that goes into it. It's kind of just completely changed my perspective on them completely. Yeah. It's fascinating. I find it very fascinating. I know they've started putting a couple documentaries on Netflix and I'm like, okay, they're slowly like introducing this. And it's curious. I'm curious to see how that works because they're mainstreaming it so much in a positive way rather than cannabis has always been dark light type of vibe. So that's interesting. And I think it does come with the R and D behind it. And, you know, there's proven benefits, health benefits that they're more likely to back up, or maybe they can more understand how to dose it, you know, from whatever studies they have. But yeah, no, for me, I think it's, it's something that it's very helpful, but like plant medicine overall, like you said, ayahuasca, that whole, um, process. I've watched a couple documentaries just from people's experiences and I know there's good and bad. Uh, it's just very interesting to see how it's all over the world in certain countries. There's always different, you know, tribes and villages that have somewhat of a culture of plant medicine people. And so I'm curious to know being Florida are you in your closer to the coast or are these more Hispanic um, background and like shamans and, and I know you guys are tropical, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Remembering that that also brings like the, uh, the mushroom hunters. Cause I know some of the mushroom heads like to go like on a full trip where you, they meet in like a forest mm -hmm. and they go hunting for it. So um, all of that is, is fascinating to me. What do you have? Do you have any insight on that? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So yes, I would say that the, like the plant medicine culture here is definitely greatly influenced by Latin America. Um, one of the first friends I made when I, when we moved here, um, is a cacao ceremonialist and she spent like a lot of time in Central America learning about cacao, working with facilitators and, um, through her, I kind of met a lot of other people that are involved in this. And there are a lot of shamans that either are coming from, um, you know, Peru or Guatemala, parts of Mexico and, there's people that like host them in their homes and then have ceremonies. Um, there's also like plant medicine churches. And this is something that's really interesting because Florida has the RFRA, RA, which is the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you can just like start a church and just start serving psychedelics. There's a lot of nuance to it. But I wonder if that has something to do with kind of these, um, this movement being here rather than maybe like in, a, in Georgia, for example, or in another bordering state that also happens to have good weather. But I think you're right that the tropical climate has a lot to do with it. Yeah. It just kind of makes, you can do things outside year round. Like similarly to Southern California, it's easier you know to host a ceremony like in this beautiful like almost rainforest like forest than you know maybe like in New Jersey in a warehouse or something like <laughs> you know <laughs> exactly yeah no it's interesting to see how many people are open to it even on the on just like the wellness side of like how mud water's like really a huge advocate for it just other healthy coffees and just everything in general in the in the regular wellness market um and i know a lot of people now are microdosing. um they like the caps i think that's really cool i think it's just easier to digest i just remember eating them like raw and hating the smell of them like in high school it was just i've had bad trips i've had good trips um as an adult i've done uh, more teas and the capsules and i've only had really like one colorful trip i haven't ever had like a crazy crazy trip and i think it's always has something to do with somebody's environment so i think that's why the preparation before something like ayahuasca ceremony is so important to somebody but um i had a friend that you know, travel to Chile. And uh, that was very much something that she, you know, the sweat lodges, like these little camp ceremonies. It was so it's just so you don't see it often. And so for me, like, for the fact that you studied it, I, I can imagine your love and passion for it is it's just like, it's not never end. So yeah, let me know if you find anybody with good uh, connection on shrooms. <laughs>
send them my way. Um, does that mean you're in the same area like Bella? Bella's in Florida, right? Yeah. So oh, Bella is in Tampa. So she's like 20 minutes north of me. Love Bella. Great mm -hmm. set of women that you guys have um, created there um, at your at the FNM team. So what do you have cooking now? Um, anything special for the end of the year? I can't believe we're basically towards the end of the year. I know. What does events look like for you guys there? You So she says it's pretty, from the last time I talked to Bella, the events are pretty popping in Florida, to my understanding, right? Yeah, there's a lot of events <laughs> all the time. Okay. Uh, I try to go to them now and again. Um, but to be honest, I don't love driving. So I don't love having to leave. like, I'm on a peninsula and everything here is like within 10 minutes away. And if there's something locally, like I'll definitely go to it. But if I have to drive like on the interstate over a bridge, I'm probably not going to go. I just don't, I, it gives me anxiety. It always has. And people are crazy drivers here. Oh man. I've never been <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, no, I'm kind of the same. I'm, I'm within like, five minutes to like a whole commercial zone of um, like Target grocery store. I really don't go further than like 30 minutes on a regular. And that's just because that's where my child's daycare is. But yeah, no, I'm pretty much the same. I don't really veer off and events here in my area aren't going on. And so it's usually an hour to LA or two hours to San Diego. And that's basically where the events happen here. Um, how's it looking for women like community in Florida as far as smoking weed? Um, well, it's funny because I like all of my friends smoke weed, but I guess that would just, you know, that kind right. of naturally really happen. <laughs> but um, no, I think, I mean, you know, the Florida, it's medical only, but it's a giant market mm -hmm. and it's so saturated. Like there are dispensaries everywhere, like within walking or biking from my house right now, I could go to three dispensaries. Oh. So I think that like, and everybody has their medical card, almost everybody you talk to, at least in our area. Again, this is kind of like a young, funky area that we're in. So it might be a little skewed. But yeah. when I talk to people in dispensaries, I'll ask them, like, what's your largest market? Like, just curious. And they always say Southwest Florida, which is all retirees. Oh. So, like, all these dispensaries that are in these, like, retirement communities are just, like, cashing in. Oh, I bet. I bet. I think um, a lot of, like, I just had a can of nurse on a uh, recording and she's, you know, going to the living, assisted living homes, all those places. Yeah. And uh, it's better than putting them on their meds or whatever they're putting on. And I think, you know, there's other people or other organizations that take little field trips. They take them like a set of older group to other dispensaries. I think it's OC normal. Um, I love that. I love seeing that because it's keeping them like vibrant. There's such good feedback on that. Such a topic that a lot of people don't like to talk about because it's just not, and you know, something that most people would think about a 75 year old asking those questions, but to know that there's women that are that age advocating plant medicine for their bodies and how it makes them feel. I'm like, yes, that's exactly what we see. It's, it's so amazing to see the different type of women in our community. Um, that's why I was just curious because in California, there's you know, there's a lot of different groups of women that are so near one another as far as city, they smoke, they're all in the industry. So they're either together. Um, me, myself, as a mom, it's, you know, you, you end up building your little can of mom tribe where we're all in the same boat where we don't have much time to go out to these events or go out partying, but it's just like mom life, but we still enjoy our, our bong togs and our spliffs, um, or we'll meet up at the beach to where we're all there. And we all understand when we say we got to go to the car, which unfortunately in California, it still upsets me that I have to go all the way to hide in my car to smoke one bowl while I can see everybody walking around with Trulies and their alcohol. And I'm like, oh, oh gosh, one day, one day. I will say bringing like a, a device, a dab device has made it easier because it's so discreet as far as the smell rather than a joint. I've never really been a big blunt person as far as taking something out. As far as when I'm with my kids, I'm not going to have a blunt with me. But yeah, I was just curious to see what it looked like for a woman out in Florida smoking weed. Yeah, it's surprisingly, 
and I always have to preface it with like we're in a very progressive region of Florida so I don't know what it would be like as a woman living like in central Florida for example um or anywhere else but in this re in this region it's there's lots of weed smoking women and lots of places where you can go and consume um you know like with your medical card like there's a yoga studio by the beach that has kind of like smoking and yoga consumption events and it's usually like you know bring your bring your own bring your medical card um but yeah like saint pete where i am is very i would say weed friendly oh well that's really nice because i know florida's not really on deck fully with with that uh it's interesting to see the outlook of different states and the zoning that you know happens in in that because it's you know the state's one thing and then you get city zones and all the you know regulations within that i have to say it's i have to check out florida someday and i know dispense you you've written a piece or maybe it was a post that you wrote on dispensary the experience you had and it wasn't much difference different than mine recently uh what does it look like to are you looking at like med men style dispensaries out there or are we like still mom and pop oh i wish it was mom and pop it's all corporate it's very much like med men style dispensaries iPad. yeah ipads and just like no human interaction um like i'll drive so i don't like driving but if i have to go and stock up I'll drive like a half an hour to go to a dispensary that I actually like going to and like speaking with the bud tenders and like, listen, I'm not hating on bud tenders at all. Like they're not paid enough. It's a, you know, um, sales role, customer facing, like not easy to do, but I also want to talk to somebody if I'm going into a store. Like if I don't want to talk to somebody, I would just order online yeah. and have to deli get delivery because you can do delivery here um or just pick up but yeah i mean i think part of the shopping experience is speaking to a salesperson i mean maybe this is like women women being spoiled by like the kind of high-end shopping experiences that we are used to like if we go into an ulta somebody's there to like help guide you through the sales process anywhere that we shop typically there's that kind of like one-on-one -on -one experience if you want it. So I like having that. And also I want to know like, what's everybody smoking that works here? Like what's everybody bringing home with them? What's your take on this new product that's coming out? And like, not just assume this and that about the products. And you, as you know, like there's so many strains, like I have no idea what these, all of these different strains are. Like I can kind of try to guess, but you can't smell anything. Yeah. You don't even see the flower. So, and I'm a flower smoker. Um, so it's kind of all guesswork. So I need a guide. Yeah, that's absolutely. My, that's my one qualm, I think, but yeah, no, I think I always joke, like, I, I wish we can go back to the mason jar days where, you know, you just at least see them, you crack them open, smell it, you used to be able to kind of touch it. Um, but yeah, no, it sucks that, you know, you go to some of these stores and I get it, it's regulation and they have to go buy it. But yeah, have the butt tenders be so on top of their game. And they don't have to know all the SKUs that they're carrying, but yeah, share your favorite brand that you're, you're keeping at home or, you know, whatever sample they gave you like that, that was fire. I had a bed tender that was like that. He even told me the temperature that was best used for this particular concentrate. And I thought that was really cool because it's rare that you get somebody to share so much information. And I do take a good 30 minutes to go through my, my questions with a butt tender. And sometimes you can see how irritated they are because they're not driving the conversation to where Indica Sativa, I just stop them right there and say, I don't even go by that. Show me, you know, some of the sun grown products. Do you have living soil products? You know, how are these grown? Um, or you can tell they're kind of trained to push brands that they just whatever, maybe that's a homey brand of there, or they know, you know, somebody that owns that brand and you can tell, and I'm not fond of that particular brand. So show me something else. And, and they didn't have any other option. That's sad. And so I think it goes both ways to where 
if you're not going to be able to show us the flower that we're buying and we're spending a good amount of money on, and I'm a, I'm a, um, like an ounce type of person. So at least, you know, once a week to two times to every two, every other week, I'm in there looking for ounces and I'm looking for smalls and sometimes that's not always there. And so if you can't even show me like quality eighths, that, that gets really tough because I don't want no, you know, something that's been on shelf that I've seen there for like the past month. Cause I go to the same stores usually. Um, but yeah, I think dispensaries have some work to do, which, you know, for me, I, I know it's a lot of work for them. And like you said, they're underpaid. Um, but I think some of them, um, some places, I know I'm a huge fan of catalyst. That's the shop that I go to that their bud tenders really show, their love for what they do. Um, they're always so informative about certain things, sharing um, new things that are coming in that I had no idea was even there. And so you, that's something I can appreciate to where I've gone to some that it's very iPad like, or um, I think there was one where if you ordered online, you stayed on the bottom floor and that was it. And you cannot even go into the top top floor to see what flowers or whatever else they had, which I thought that was really weird. So, uh, yeah, I think it's interesting. I've never been to different state. Oh, I've been to MedMen in Nevada, but I don't travel often. So I'm always asking people like, what do dispensaries look like for you guys there? Um, I know out here dispensaries are hard to find like that are up and running. They're, they're pretty, pretty, I mean, catalyst is everywhere. I have a couple friends, three C's, uh, but it's not like it used to be where you're saying like you guys have it where it's like every other shop because I'm in a I think a county that's not too friendly with the idea so I guess there's like temporary licenses that you can get and run on six months and then they're gone so I've experienced a lot of those to where I'm like weed maps go to this thing and then there's like nothing there and and it sucks too because being on, on the chamber, I get to find out how legislative works, how regulatory works. And to know that you're, you're being given this license and you don't really abide by it. And then you, you do things like that. It's like, you wonder why they're becoming so strict on licensing in, in just California, even though we're recreational. Um, it's just, it's a shit show. It's just a complete shit show out here, which is sad. So, uh, I feel you when you said you had to, you know, jump over ships for certain reasons, but you're still very much part of it. And I appreciate that. Like I said, my bank, my background that usually pays the bills is banking. I mean, corporate banking has always been my background. Um, thankfully, you know, with baby two, I can stay home and do other things like this and interview great women like yourself. Um, but no, there's no money in this. And a lot of people ask me, like, are you getting sponsorships for this? I'm not getting sponsorships for this because that's not where it is for me. I, I really just want people to understand where we're at, who are the people in the industry and where they come from. And if they have a brand, kind of know who they are behind the brand, like, a, you know, uh, an actual product, um, know why they're pushing it, why they got into cannabis, because I know there's a lot of um, riffraff as well in our own cannabis industry. And so that's what I'm here for. So I thank you for sharing your time. Um, just to ask, uh, your network primarily, I would say, is a little bit of both when it comes to the cannabis industry and just your professional background. My network, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. 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 Um, actually, I would say the majority of my network is cannabis people. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And, you know, some others here and there, but majority is definitely cannabis. I just feel like I stepped in and kind of just like found pe my people really quickly and cultivated a community, not myself, but the community kind of like took me in, I guess you could say. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think we love somebody that's as organic as you are and, you know, keeps it a buck. And I think that's what we need more of in our community. Um, and being a voice, a voice for women, um, somebody that knows a little bit about the plant and isn't just putting raunchy content out there. Sometimes content can be put out there with no thought put into it. And unfortunately, that hurts, you know, the industry in some way. So I think um, when we're taking the time to really show our skills and what we can bring as far as assets and being value, um, bringing value to others, I think that's that's where the money is. So where can we support you and find you? I know um, LinkedIn, you're personally, I would say. Yeah, right. I don't know. Do I follow you? Yeah, link, LinkedIn. 
Uh, that'd be great. I'm under Melanie Rizzo Smith. My name just changed. I got married a couple months ago. Um, and yeah, you can find me on Instagram as well if you'd like. It's mostly pictures of my dog. Um, <laughs> but he's really cute. Um, and that's Melanie Smith. So I'm easy to find. Awesome. Awesome. I appreciate your time and you coming on here and sharing a little bit about yourself. But before I let you go, I always do this with my guests. I have a seven grams, kind of like a rapid fire and just a couple questions to get to know you before I let you go. And it's just something fun. You'll be cool. asked a couple questions about weed, couple about fitness, couple um, questions about uh, just you in general. So you ready? You want to smoke? Do you have anything to smoke with you? I do. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Oh, yay. Oh, and you have the moose lab. Oh, yeah. My child has. I love this. I love the mouthpiece. Yeah, actually, I don't even know if it's moose labs. That's the last one I had. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Moose labs. I, at first I wasn't sure I was going to like it, but I love it. Yeah, no, it makes a huge difference. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, my child just, mine was like a Rasta color. So it's gone somewhere. He's you know, totally playing. <laughs> um okay cool so we're gonna get going and get started with our seven grams seven questions you can answer in one word or one sentence completely up to you never ever happens but <laughs> feel free to stick to it introvert or extrovert introvert yoga or weightlifting yoga we're gonna go down some strains indica or sativas um, you can pick one or whichever one you think you would prefer. Um, let's go with Tahoe OG or Sour Diesel. Sour Diesel. Okay. Sativa <laughs> line. A uh, hardcover book or audio book? Ooh, both. It depends on what I'm listening to or reading. Oh, that's a good like idea. If yeah, if it's like a story, like, a, like maybe a mystery or something really um, immersive, then an audiobook's awesome. But if it's like a, something to, you know, improve my finances, I want to read it and have it in front of me. Yes, yes, I'm exactly the same, I would say. Uh, sun grown or indoor flower? I'm still decide. I, I like sun grown because I just feel like that makes sense. But there are some pretty amazing indoor grown stuff. So both leaning on sun grown, let's say. Yeah, I know it's such a toughie, but you're right. Yeah, I think for health reasons, for terp reasons, flavor reasons, sun grown, um, but still respecting the uh, yeah. um, NAS indoor that's out there for sure. Um, okay, so let's go with, let's. Can you name three biggest influencers that have molded you into your journey today? Oh, that's tough. <laughs> the three biggest influences. They can be like parents. They can be, some people have said parents, uh, friends, coaches. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I would say my mom, because my mom has always just encouraged me to you know, follow my gut, do what I want and like live authentically. Um, I had a professor in college and grad school who absolutely helped shape me into, I think like who I am now just by kind of like being a leading by example and also being really encouraging whenever I was struggling to kind of like show me that I could overcome things that I thought were really difficult. And then I would say, so this is funny, not, it's an author of a book. So if you haven't read this book, I would suggest reading it. And it's Mindset by Dr. Carol Dweck. And this book completely changed my life because I was struggling with imposter syndrome and I couldn't get out of my own way. And it's something that so many people struggle with, especially women. And this book just like, blew my mind right open and allowed me to see like the blocks that I was facing and just completely changed the entire trajectory of my career. So that's definitely one. That is great. I'm going to write that down. Lastly, what brings you the most joy in life? 
that just being with people I love in sharing experiences with them brings me the most joy and it's nothing really super specific it's just like being with quality people doing quality things and quality things could be you know sharing a joint it could be hiking it could be going on a vacation whatever it is um but that like small moments of connection I guess yeah 100 percent. I think I would say the same it's it's the peace and and that you're finding in like those energies and those people, I can respect that for sure. Well, thank you for doing the seven grams and jumping on here with me. It's, it was a pleasure getting to know a little bit about you um, on, on your journey and kind of where you're at now and where you're planning to go. Um, Hope to get you back on and uh, thank you again for coming on with us. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really love being here and I'm, this is my first podcast for everybody. Just so you know. (laughs) <laughs> you did amazing and you look great so it's going to be all good we're going to put all the information here on how we can support you and where we can find you thank you so much and i hope you have a great rest of your night enjoy your night thank you i appreciate you i appreciate you too talk to you soon